If you're thinking about getting into model railroading or you're already an addict, boy, do we have a project for you. In this episode, we take three pieces of track and we turn them into one and we make it happen right now. Welcome to It's My Railroad, the how-to show for regular people. Hey listen, if you haven't already done it, how about pushing that subscribe button? We have new episodes coming out every Thursday morning at 6 a.m. California time, and I don't want you to miss any of the ones uh, coming up. Plus, in two or three weeks, we have a very special announcement we're going to make. You're going to have to wait for it. Before we get into the hobby room, I just want to take a minute and welcome all of our new subscribers. Oh, wow. Uh, when I first had this idea, it was just to pretty much have a vlog that I show people what I'm doing on my layout and do it in kind of a show kind of way because that's kind of how I roll. Uh, I did not expect to see this kind of support and interaction with the Model Railroad community. So um, I know your time is valuable and it really means a lot to us that you'll spend some of those minutes a week uh, hanging out with us at It's My Railroad. So thank you again and welcome to all of our new subscribers. And Speaking of subscriber interaction, in our last episode we were making some logs and at the end of that episode I asked you guys to sort of share your log experiences and how you make logs uh, with the rest of the It's My Railroad community and uh, a couple of y'all did. The mysterious Mr. C uh, has an idea that uh, includes taking shoe polish, black and brown, you mix it with some alcohol and uh, you dunk your sticks in there, rasp them up a bit, boom, you've got logs. It's amazing. When we get over to the port, um, I've got these little retaining piers that I make out of logs, basically, and I think that treatment is going to look pretty well on those. So in season two, when we get over to the port, we'll probably give that at least a try. So thank you, Mr. C, for bringing that one on board. Uh, also, my good friend Mark over at Eminem. <laughs> Mark's way of making logs is he takes a piece of paper out of his wallet and he hands it to some guy who has plastic that he gives back to him and it's in the shape of a log. Um, that's a brilliant. I, I never thought of doing it that way, but a shout out to Mark for your version of building logs for your layout. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's talk about what we're going to work on today. We're going to, first of all, show you kind of how the structure's set up in the logging camp one more time so we can stay connected to kind of how it's taking shape up there because between last week and the next this week and a couple of more weeks, we're going to spend a lot of time at the hobby table um, getting stuff ready for installation. So let's stay connected to the actual logging camp. I think it's a great idea. Um, so that's A. B, we're going to take and we're going to trace out where the tracks go. Now this is different than what we did in the track zone episode. That was for scenery, so scenery didn't interfere where the tracks are going to go. This tracing is going to tell us specifically where we're going to lay all the sleepers, that we lay the logs on, that we lay the railroad ties on, that we lay the rails on, whew, to build this logging camp. So uh, that's what we're going to do. And then finally, and the most significant part of this, is we're going to take that first turnout, the two Atlas little pieces of track that come in off the hillbilly bridge, begin all the treatments and preparation to turn that into one piece of track that can be stabbed onto the end of the hillbilly bridge, give us a nice firm, solid insertion point for the rest of the track. So blah, 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 there's a whole lot, right? <laughs> Why don't we just stop screwing around in here and let's head into the hobby room. Welcome back to the hobby room. I went back through and I set the track up like we showed before in a previous episode and kind of laid the structures in there kind of the way we think everything's gonna go. We're not 100% certain that it's going to look like this, but just let me point out some of the details we have here and then we'll actually start prepping the track that we're going to end up putting in back here. So what I did was I went ahead and laid out some of the uh, structures kind of uh, where I think actually they're going to go at this point because we're getting ready to lay some track, but uh, this is that old stock room sort of warehouse that we had in the logging camp before. This is the bunkhouse slash eatery. Remember the Del Taco before there was a Del Taco? Uh, and these are a couple of the little cabins. May put some more of those little cabins going down along here in this whole area here. Um, also in the background, I bought these Z-scale um, cabins that I might try to figure out a way to put back here somewhere or something and, and give some dimension to, to the, the fact, because they'll be smaller than the rest of these, so maybe it'll look like they're back in the distance. Haven't figured that out yet. We might give that a shot. Uh, moving forward a little bit, we've got the 
the bobtail caboose converted to an office. We're going to reuse that theme right there. This is a uh, car that I believe is a cattle car, to tell you the truth. But I use this car to represent um, supplies coming from the port all the way to the logging camp and also over to the coal mine. Uh, that lets me know what's in there. And then right here, this says uh, pure cane molasses on the side of it, this tanker car here. But uh, ultimately when I refinish this, this is going to be the car that brings water up to the logging camp. We're going to have maybe a water tower kind of in this area or somewhere. Uh, we'll know better when we get into the structures a little bit more. And then we move forward a little bit more. This is the uh, the blacksmith shop slash tack room. Just for now, I just put those old deck pieces in there just because it's kind of fun. But there'll be a corral in here somewhere that the, uh, the horsies, they'll come down from the logging area and they'll hang out there and eat and do whatever horses do when they're not pulling logs out of the forest. And then way in front, I got this idea for the... Um, the, the steam donkey here that it's going to be positioned here and its job is to either pull the cars from these sidings down here we'll look at in just a second with a cable or they run the cables all the way back between the two spurs to a pulley and pull the cars the other way I decided that basically the steam donkey is going to be used to switch cars around uh, on uh, in the logging camp when the locomotive's not around, so that's kind of cool. But something else that we're very excited about is our disconnect log cars. We just got these in a couple days ago, and here's just one of them. I haven't put the rest of them together yet, but we're excited about these because they'll take bigger logs. Um, it'll it'll make operations a little more interesting because we have to disconnect them and move one forward when we have to, and put a log between them. And I don't know, it's just kind of a cool thing to add to the overall mix of the logging camp and logging operations. Okay, what I think we'll do now is get anything that's not essential back out of the logging camp. We got these cars over here, we got the structures uh, and everything. We'll pull those out real quick and then we'll come back in and we're gonna trace out where the track goes. The reason we're gonna do that is because now we're gonna take the track off and that'll tell us where it goes. And as we start laying our road bed, we can pretty much get it right to where it needs to be. All right, so uh, just come back into here and, and kind of the way I like to trace this out is kind of like right along the edge of where the track is and, and, and here's why. Uh, there are guys that will go through and give you the center line and that's fine. Uh, the problem for me with that is, and it's just because I'm kind of a dork when it comes to this stuff, I can't put down the caulking or the glue or whatever without covering that up. I don't know how to do it. So suddenly I lose track of, of where my stuff's going and uh, you know then I gotta sort of align it on the fly and that really doesn't work for me. But anyway, that's the first section um, laid out uh, and we'll just see if we take this off here real quick. You can see that, that we've got sort of this channel right here. Ultimately, what will happen is we'll start laying those logs across here, the ones that we made a couple episodes ago or last episode. Uh, we'll start putting those in. But uh, up here between the turn on the bridge, I got a special way I'd like to do that. Um, after that, we're going to do it a different way. And again, I'm making this up as I go along. Um, I've never even seen this done before, so we're just going to have some fun with it. So let's just move on and continue tracing out the track. All right, so we got it all traced out. Uh, now we know where the track goes. We're gonna fine tune this a smidge as we go uh, because nothing ever works right on my first try. So we'll have to probably fix some stuff. But right now, let's just take the track off of here and go from there. All I gotta do is pull my pins. Okay, so we've got everything stripped off of there now, including the track. All that remains are the track tracks. <laughs> yeah, anyway, but the next thing I'd like to do is take the turnout and the two short pieces of track that come in off the hillbilly bridge and just go ahead and put them together um, and, the, and solder the rail joiners and make this, I'll do it on over on the hobby table on a, a really flat surface and turn this basically into one 
piece of track by soldering those rail joiners. Uh, we solder rail joiners all the time, but in this case, doing it in advance makes it one piece of track, and here's why. I have found that with my limited skills, anything that's complicated relative to track, uh, I can't get it to line up quite right all the time. I don't know why. I, I just seem no matter what I do, it doesn't work right. So if I get this all soldered together as one piece of track and then stab it into the hillbilly bridge, I'm pretty confident the radius will be good. Uh, it'll be relatively flat. And uh, from then on, we can just sort of do whatever we're going to do. But that's that initial insertion point, especially when we're going to try this new log roadbed technique. I think it'll be more stable. So anyway, it's my railroad and that's just what we're going to do. So we'll go ahead and um, solder these together, uh, paint them, and then we'll go ahead and glue the logs to the bottom, just like we're going to have it, and then we'll stab it onto the hillbilly bridge. That'll give us the launching pad. I think for the rest of the track, we'll just lay the, the logs down like you would just logs, I guess, and lay the, uh, the logs on top of those and sort of lay the track as we go. But on this first section, uh, we'll do it all as one piece, and um, let's just head over to the hobby table and start working on that. Okay, so over at the hobby table, we have our two curved pieces, and we have our turnout. Uh, again, these are from Atlas, and this is from Pico. The reason I'm using the Atlas ones here in the curve is because, well, I have Atlas left over from back when I was just experimenting with model railroading and just trying to buy whatever I could buy and uh, we ended up with Atlas. So it's not gonna matter come the end of the day. Uh, Atlas, like we've said, is, is still a good product. Lots of people use it. Um, lots of people use Pico too. It all just depends on kind of what you end up with. But to sort of prep this to get going, we don't have any cuts to make in the rails, so that's good news. Nothing to, uh, to deal with there. However, um, you can see on this little piece of track right here, I went ahead and cut out what they call the the D ring, the D loop, the D rail, something. It's a D something right here. You can see on that one there is one, on this one there's not. So we want to cut that out first of all. And it's a real simple matter. You just take your X-Acto knife and you just get in there and you just cut it, cut it like this, and do the other side. Kind of like that. I'm not trying to make it perfect. Uh, first of all, you're never going to see it. Second of all, this is a logging camp, bro. Um, they don't have the highest quality lumber and everything done there. Anyway, so that's that. That did two things. One, it got rid of those, those little deep thingers. Uh, two, it uh, made it so the rail joiners are going easy. Hey, it's a two for one deal. Then on the turnout, though, we've got a little bit of extra work we want to do on this turnout. Um, and again, I'll, I'll probably keep saying this as we get forward, um, move forward, but turnouts, man, I've found if you don't treat them right, they will not treat you right when the time comes. So um, as we lay this, I want it to be flat. I don't want anything to get into any pieces of the mechanism or the electrical or it just causes so many problems. But starting here at the very beginning, I think it's okay. We have to do the same thing on this. We want to get rid of these ties so that we can slide the rail joiners on. And we just do this here and pull that off. Now we can slide rail joiners on. And this one is, is kind of funky. I, I always hate doing this part because you got to kind of come back here to cut it right there. See that right there? And then you got to cut it up here on this part like that. Okay, so I've cut it here and I've cut it here. Then this whole little piece has got to get out and it's tough because it's, it's really thick plastic. So I try to be really careful about how I do that because I really don't want to deform my turnout. Cut those little pieces there. See, it's not coming out. I got to cut this right here. There, see, we cut that sucker right there and now we can just pull this out, and voila, turn out, turn out, turn out, turn out. We got a little cleaning up to do here. On that, and on that. I think that was pretty successful. I don't think we messed up our turnout at all. And then there's one more thing we want to do to prep these things, and that is to get a file and file down the edges, just like we did on the track we cut. 
And here's why we want to do that. For the very same reason that we, uh, we did the other ones. Now, we don't really have to uh, do the bottoms. There's really no burr here from, from cutting like we had when we put the little piece of track in uh, where the sawmill used to be. But I still have the same thing here where I like to just take a little bit off the tops at an angle just so that the pieces of track from one to another will make a smooth vertical transition. And then I go through and file that web down in there just like we did on the other piece of track. Again, this is so when you go from one piece of track to another, if there's a slight um, misalignment there, the instead of the, the wheels hitting it, um, they sort of end up moving. It's like a transition from one track to the other. And um, that flange helps it flow. So we will just do that for all of these. Turn out. my friends there you go we've got these prepped and ready to get put together we've got our turnout prepped and ready to go together what we'll do now is we'll do the old rail joiner attachment and solder scenario now on this side over here this is where it connects to the hillbilly bridge the hillbilly bridge already has uh, rail joiners on it so we don't need to do anything here with that and actually we probably will not solder it to the hillbilly bridge so that whatever little maybe imperfection or expansion or contraction of the rails can be absorbed there and not misalign everything downstream of that. So we'll solder, solder here, solder here, and I'll go ahead and just stick rail joiners on here, but we won't solder them down yet. What will happen is once I set this track down, if I've already got rail joiners in place, then sliding another piece of track on is way easier, in my opinion, than having rail joiners on the new piece of track and trying to get underneath here when this is already sort of glued down. So we'll get the rail joiners going, and that's basically, you've seen us do this before on uh, where the sawmill was. So we'll just try to do this real quick, not take a bunch of your time on it. Take our rail nippers and you just cut off the excess. And just slide these suckers on there. So all of the rail joiners are in place. Uh, we go ahead and just slide these together. Like so. And they're not exactly where they need to be. We just slide it over a little bit right in the center. And this one needs to cheat over just a smidge like that. And so what we see here, this is what's going to come off the hillbilly bridge and go into the logging camp. What we're going to do now is we're going to put a little rosin on here and then we're going to solder those together and then we're going to paint this thing. So let's grab the soldering iron and make that happen. All right, so we've got the soldering iron heating up right now uh, over here on the hobby table. Uh, while it does, I thought I'd show you what we're going to do here. I bought this rosin flux from a... a a radio shack and here's the thing uh, it's just rosin flux I know I needed it I don't know anything specific about it other than this is what it's used for I have found that if I don't put this flux down on my solder joints two things happen one for some reason it takes forever for the solder to melt now that may be an old wives tale I don't know but it seems to be affecting me um, the second thing is some of the connections even though they look nice and shiny and pretty Sometimes I can just pull them apart. Uh, that doesn't work. And that's because of the impurities and stuff, the, the junk that's uh, on the material that we're soldering. So this kind of cleans it up and makes it happen. Uh, this right here is 0.015 solder. I'm, again, I work in N-scale, uh, a lot of small parts. And I use this solder for um, 
soldering wires for uh, DCC controllers or, or wires to the rails or rail joiners in this case. So, I mean, this is what I use. Um, I, I've used to use bigger solder because I bought it at Home Depot and, and that's pretty much what they had. And, and it, it's terrible because it just leaves a ton of solder. Um, and we need to finesse this a little bit more. It's a model railroad. So anyway, I think the uh, soldering iron, it seems to be getting hot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of this rosin right here, some of this flux, and get a little bit on my brush right here, and then go through and just put it down on the places that we are going to solder like that. Like that, and like that. There. That wasn't so hard, was it? It's kind of like applesauce on my rails, but you know, we do what we got to do. Then I take out the solder, make sure everything's where I want it. Soldering iron. Now the trick here, and one of the things I'm terrible at with soldering, this is one of my least favorite things to do on a model railroad, is to not melt the ties uh, when you're trying to do this. And, and sometimes I do, and sometimes I warp things, and it, it works out pretty bad for me come the end of the day. But you get the metal all hot, like I'm doing right now, and then touch the solder to it, and what's supposed to happen is that solder will start f traveling like that, it travels through the joint in the rail joiner. That solder has traveled all the way back through there, I think. As a matter of fact, we can just test that to make sure I did that right here on camera. See that? Soldered, boom! I actually got one right on camera. That makes it, uh, that makes it fun for me. Uh, let's get this one done here. Same thing, we heat it up until it gets nice and hot. And we move it around a lot, apparently. And then get that solder in there. Now this one's not cooperating as well. And we missed a little spot here. Hold on a second. Now you need to keep that tip up off that, that tie right there because I'm getting ready to melt me a railroad tie right here on, on live YouTube TV. And, well, let's see if that got it. It kind of looks like it did, but my eyesight's kind of bad. Nope, it didn't get it. And it's really hot, by the way. All right, so that one didn't quite take. All right, that one kept giving me trouble, so I just went ahead and, uh, and fixed it without boring you guys with it. Um, I think it's because I'm doing it backwards, um, trying to get over there. Uh, I actually melted my railroad tie a little bit. I'm telling you people, this is my least favorite part of what I do. Uh, luckily, at the beginning of this series, I reminded you all that I am not an expert at this. I am a regular guy, and, and this is just what happens. And it doesn't always go right. I wish it did. Matter of fact, I'm a contractor, and I wish that the construction stuff that I did went right all the time, and it doesn't. So, just keep working on this. Okay, so we've soldered the rail joiners on. Uh, like I said, it, it took me some doing because I suck at it. Uh, it's nice and flat, which is what we want. And I'm now gonna go through and gently run my file over the top of these connections because sometimes the solder will get up there and make a little bump. Um, I'm not trying to sort of score the rails at all. It's more like polishing it with my little file. And I, yeah, over here, we got a little carried away with solder. So, boy, I'll tell you, um, it was kind of a pain in the backside, but that seems to have come out okay. And there's no solder on the inside that'll hit the flanges of the cars. So at this point, I think we're pretty good. And we're back in the studio. Hey, there you go. We finally got a piece of track soldered together into one piece of track. In the coming weeks, what we end up doing is painting it and putting the wood on it and stabbing it onto the hillbilly bridge and moving forward. Oh, and by the way, don't be fooled by what you saw there. 
that guy sucks at soldering, uh, so much so that when we get down to some intensive soldering a little bit later in the series, we'll go ahead and give you some videos to some, some really accomplished uh, people that we can sort of brush up on our soldering skills with. So, by the way, uh, just a little uh, bit of trivia. We're about halfway through season one. Isn't that amazing? Uh, which means the end is in sight. We're over the hill and coming up here soon we're going to see some trains running up in that logging camp. So, um, I hope you all stay tuned and I hope you all come back and watch us finish this sucker. Hey, now let me ask you this question. If you haven't started building your model railroad yet, what are you waiting for? The return of Baywatch? Who isn't? Alright, thanks again for watching. My name is Steve Brown and I will see you next time. So I don't even really know where I was going with that. I kind of got lost. I went off the rails, hoo-hoo, like a crazy train.